So uh, hopefully today's lecture will be reasonably independent of what happened ye yesterday. But uh, let me start by saying this, what are you going to do today? We just want to uh, see some examples of this dynamic tree data structure, how is this implemented. So, till now what were we saying? We want to solve dynamic connectivity, but we assumed that we are given as a black box some data structure that uh, solves this problem when the set of edges is acyclic. Okay? And now, we want to see how can we implement this data structure. Yes. So, this uh, edges that you are inserting that might be a cycle. No, you are guaranteed that f is a forest. Oh, you are guaranteed. Yes, this is dynamic tree data structure. It is guaranteed that f is a forest. And if you recall yesterday's lecture, this is what we used, right? We said that we can just maintain the forest. Okay. Now, how are we going to do that? And also recall that we need to support some more updates and queries such as okay, given a node v, what is the size of this component that it belongs to and so on. We will see that later, but first let us just do the basic thing. Okay. How can we do this? Okay. So, uh, what we need to do actually? We basically need to represent a tree right? in some sense, uh, in some form uh, as part of the data structure. So, the easiest way to do this is what is called an ET tree. Okay. Any guess what does ET stand for? Oil at tool. Okay, good. I initially thought it would be extraterrestrial, but I hope no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, but it is not extraterrestrial, it is called oil at tool. Okay. So, what does this mean? Uh, let us just take an example. Give me any tree, okay? So uh, this is V one, V two. I'm just drawing any arbitrary tree. <coughs> Say here you have V four, V five, V six. V seven. Okay. So first note that this is not a rooted tree, this is not even a binary tree. This is just one tree in this forest. We are going to root it arbitrarily at any node. So let this be the root. This is just arbitrary. Then we are just going to consider an Euler tour in this tree. So, what is that Euler 2? You start at this root or you go this way. So, this is also basically an in order traversal. No, okay. let us just call this Euler 2. But you know what I mean, right? It is yes, exactly. It is also doing a DFS basically. Okay. This is just the way the nodes will be visited in a DFS. Okay. Next, we are just going to write this Euler tool by just looking at uh, the occurrences of the nodes. So, what will this Euler tool look like? You start at V1, then you have V2. V 8. Can somebody help me? I, I just do not want to look at this thing multiple times. V 2. Oh, it is too much, it is too long. Okay. I should have picked some smaller tree. Let us do this like this. Okay. V 1, V 2, V 8, then you again get V 2. Okay. V 3, yes, then. Mm -hmm. V four, V three, V two, V seven, V two, V one. That's it, right? 
ओके ठीक है देन दिस वी सिक्स एंड वी वन कैन एवरीबडी सी द बोर्ड दिस इज द लास्ट वन वी वन ओके नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू स्टोर दिस एज ए डब्ल्यू लिंक लिस्ट फार्दर मोर let's look at one node okay so an entry here we will call it an et node so this say is an et node okay so these et nodes are stored as a double linked list in this order and these are the actual nodes the next thing is you are also storing the actual node somewhere right so v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 v6 v7 then what will you do and these are the actual nodes sorry v8 ah okay v8 is also there okay then what will you do for each actual from each actual node you store a pointer to the first entry in this list and the last entry in this list okay then v2 first appears here and when does it last appear here so you see what i mean right you can do this everywhere and another thing is that of course from every et node there will be a pointer to the actual node this is okay right so given an et node you can just quickly identify the on only purpose of this pointer is that given an et node you can identify it which node it corresponds to that's it so here you have double pointer like this from v2 you have this and so on basically this is our data structure now for the time being we just said that we stored this as a double linked list let us go along with that and see what happens then we will see how to modify this double linked list what to do with it later on so the three is given separately and you could have might as well point this all this pointers to the nodes are we no we are not storing the tree oh, we are just storing this yes that's it so given this uh, input node set and the forest edges for each tree in the forest you will just have this structure that's it okay is it clear what is going on i'm going to erase so initially so you have nothing just entries after yes so then you are able to the yes then it is empty okay now what is going to happen say we delete an edge let us take any edge let us say this one suppose we delete v2 comma v3 from this tree so now we will get two new trees let us just do this okay so this is one tree this is another and let us say we are now going to uh, root the new tree at v3 okay you can pick any root so this euler tool now modifies to be this right i mean earlier the Euler tool in the old tree is now like this, and the Euler tool in the new tree is like this. Okay. Note that there are very few changes happening, right? So how will this list split up? You will see that okay, you are uh, deleting this v two comma v three edge, right? What you do? You look at this node v three. Look at its first occurrence. and look at its last occurrence and this entire portion 
will just be deleted. Okay. Then what we will see, now you have two V2s consecutively because there is just an add one additional V2. So, you will just delete this entry and you just take this part and append this part. This will give you the list for the original tree and this will give you the list for the new tree. Clear? No, 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 no. Right. So when you delete the V two V three, then suppose you look at the node V two and try to find the first and the last operation of V two. No. And How will you find it? You just go to V three, right? Okay. Find first and last occurrence of V three. Right. So just look at the next occurrence. I mean, look at this last occurrence of V three. Just go to the next occurrence. That will be the duplicate occurrence of V two, right? Yes. Yes. Now suppose you instead did that for V2. You are given V2, V3. How do you decide between V2 and V3? No, see, the, as V3 is the child of V2, uh -huh. the whole operands of V2 will be sandwiched between two V3. Correct. We will move the module. Oh, okay. Okay, the parent. Yes, right. Fine. Okay. So you also stored that. Okay. I stand corrected. You stored the tree. So when V2, comma V3 is being deleted, you know, uh, I mean, what, which one is V3's parent? I mean, okay, which one is the parent? Sorry? Oh, okay. That way also you can find out. You see? So, okay. You see, basically there are multiple ways of doing that thing. But what is the high level idea? The high level idea is that when you are deleting this edge, all you need to do is split the Euler tool. That is it at certain points. And of course, you need to find this and delete this. Okay. Yes. Yes, then you have to again s make a cycle. I mean, suppose you chose V5 as a root, then what will you do? I mean, you will take this and you have to make a cyclic shift. Yes. It is just a cyclic shift, nothing. Okay. So, just remember this line, deleting an edge means splitting the Euler tool. Okay, what happens? Any question? When you say insert, say you are inserting another tree and say this is u and this was the root of the Euler tree. Okay, suppose for the time being we are given that q was the root and now I, I am saying that okay, insert this edge from v7 to u. What will you do? So, let us first look at this new tree okay? and I am just going to write down the Euler tool for the new tree. So, this thing got deleted, V2, V8, V3, okay. then this part is now V7, another V2, V1, V6, V1. Okay.
and v3, v5, v4. I have to cut this thing. Here is v3, v5, v4. So v6, v7, v8. Okay. So now I say that insert v7 comma u. What will you do? Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. Just find the first occurrence of V7, make a copy. You can find this using this pointer, right? Make a copy here and then just insert the Euler tour of U here in this range. So there will be Euler tour for U. That is it. So there is this one insert making du one duplicate copy and then you are joining to list basically. Sorry? So the final occurrence of V7 is copy. Yes. So you need to modify that master module. Oh, yes, there will also be one more pointer here. Is that what you are asking? Okay. Yes. Yes. And so now how are you going to do this? Basically, you first split out this part. You have this whole list, right? You just split out this part, then you join this part at the end, then you put V7 and then again join this part. Okay? So, we said that insert and delete take log n time. Yes. So, the reason being you have to search in this list of nodes first. Yes, that is the idea. That is exactly the idea. And I am going to just elaborate on that right now. So, the. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Now, in this error too, first V2, uh, like now the way we said, we said, okay, we will go to the V2 first mm -hmm. and we will add this guy and then add V2 and concatenate everything. Yes. Now, this error too is like, so we can get some error too. So, we all just desire to have some error too. Yes. It does not have to be. Because now, uh, when you do this, it's like from V2 first you go search everything in this tree, then come to V8. And yes. Then yes. 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 So this could just happen. yes. Okay. Also, we have an order to fix for each tree. For the each rotated tree, we have an order. Yes. 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 I mean. <laughs> yes. Okay. Then. Exactly, very good point. I am just going to come to that. Your question? Okay. <laughs> the answer to your question is, if you just want to support this insert delete updates, then of course you can just do doubly linked list and do it in constant time. However, how are we going to respond to the query whether two nodes U and V are in the same component? You need to find the head of the list, right? Okay. And that, so suppose these nodes are stored. No. Okay, okay. I think we are just jumping ahead. Can we just get back? I will address your question just in five minutes. Just give me five minutes, okay? So the idea here is the main observation here is whenever you are deleting an edge or inserting an edge, basically what you are jo doing is you are just join, joining two lists or splitting a list. That is it. 
join and split it in this. Okay. And we know that okay, if we have a doubly linked list, then we can join and split quite fast. Now, the next two questions to be addressed, one which you raised that okay, how are we going to answer the query whether u and v are in the same component or not. So, basically you are given just two nodes using these back pointers you can get here, but you need to check whether they have the same header or not. It is going to take too long. No, then when you are splitting it will take long right. You have to adjust the headers. Okay. So, how to answer the query that is the first question and the second question is what uh, uh, Ruhani raised that here in insert I just assumed that u is the root. What if u was not the root? So, what if u was here say this was the root and the insert operation said this. Okay. Then of course, we cannot join the Euler tool of this tree right. So, we need to support one more operation and that operation will simply be make root. So, when you call make root u what it does is it looks at the tree containing u and makes u the root of the tree and just uh, adjust the Euler tool so that it starts at u. And uh, can you be convinced that it can be done again using some join and splits? Because what are you doing? It's basically you are just doing a cyclic shift, right? The cyclical order remains exactly the same, and you are just representing it as a linear order. So you said this is a doubly linked list, right? Yes. Uh, yes. No, there ought to be an header, right? I mean, so okay, this is the start of the list and this is the end of the list, say. Correct. So, so, but, uh, so just forget about v1 for the moment. Yes. Okay, here, here is the thing. Suppose we want to make, okay, let's just say we want to make v2 the new root, okay? So, we are given an all that tool. It is rooted at v1, and now we say that we need to make v2 the new root. Then what will happen? So uh, yeah. So we pick an occurrence of v2. The first and last occurrence we know they are here. Uh, pick the first occurrence. No. Okay. Can I say this that it's v1, v8, right? So look at this portion. This portion will go here. And then we will add one more occurrence of v2. And then this portion will come here. But why do you, so Sorry. You the picture is like you, you are actually storing a cycle. Okay? Yes. So it's, it's a cycle which is what is repeated. Yes. Now there was a pointer out and this is pointing to the root of this cycle. So okay. Just rotate the cycle and point it to the root. Okay. That is also a valid explanation. Point being there is no link between the head and tail of this linked list or linked list. Uh, so that is way more. Yes. Yes. Okay, I can get into the implementation details, but I hope that you understand the main idea. I mean, you can work out the pseudocode given 15 minutes of time, but the main idea is that the cyclical order remains exactly the same regardless of, of where you pin down the root. So, it is not difficult to arrange that thing. Now, Ruani, does that answer your question that what happens if you insert this edge? You first call make root of u that you can do quickly and then do this procedure. Okay. Now, the more challenging part, what is your name? Pratik, okay. Pratik's question that uh, how do I answer the query given any two nodes? Do they belong to the same component? Any idea? Before inserting, no, till so now. So, the way I defined it is that it is guaranteed. So, that we won't be making such a insert. Yes, 
but you can say that it's uh, just putting it slightly differently that in the dynamic connectivity application to ensure that guarantee we will first probe do you see what i mean yes yes but it, it just boils down to the same thing I, I just want to define the abstract data structure okay so it ne just needs to support the query that whether u and v belong to the same component now any idea how to do that it's not difficult actually Yes, right. But you cannot store a pointer to the head from every ET node, right? Then what will be the time? It will be the length of the list. It can be O of n. And one hint, this is where log n will come. You cannot do it in constant time, you can do it in log n time. Now, what does that tell you? Then again, you will have to traverse the. In you will meet in the last occurrence first, right? I mean yes, but. One way or the other, you will be meeting before halfway. No? Yes, but that in the worst case, the total length traversed can be O of n, right? So, what other question? Since it's log n update time, is there any data structure that comes to your mind that has log n worst case update time and that is taught in the introductory algorithm scores? Okay, another something else? Exactly, balance search tree. Instead of storing this as a doubly linked list, just store these things as a balance search tree. And then you just need to check two things. One, you just have this order, right? I mean, you don't have to store the exact key values as in balance search tree. You just given this order. You can just check, go ahead and look back at, uh, say, any introductory algorithms book and check that you can do join and split on this order in using balance search trees in log n worst case time. And then when you want to just answer the query, connected, u comma v, say here is you want to check whether v 2 and okay, whether v 6 and v 8 are connected, you just go to the et node following this pointer, no, where am I going to v 6, sorry, this does not make sense. So, from v 6 you go to the ET node here from V8, you follow this pointer, go to the ET node here. Now, in this search tree, you just find the root. What is the root of this search tree containing V8? What is the root containing this search tree V6? Since the this is height log n, you can find the roots in log n time and check if the two roots are equal. Okay. Any question? Yes, in log n time. Hmm? Oh, I actually do not know. Since I am not an expert in data structures, there might be something more involved that can be done in constant time. But in log n time, if, 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 if you are allowed log n time for every operation in the worst case, this can be done. Right? Mm 
pH. Yes, your question is if this can be done in constant time. I, I, I really do not know. I cannot certify that it cannot be done. No, it need not form a subtree. Split just means split all the values less than k or something. Okay. So, now uh, can you check we need to uh, support some more queries right. If you go back to the dynamic connectivity algorithm, we had to support say this query size of v. So, look at the tree containing V, what is the number of nodes in that tree? How will you support that using ET trees? Yes, yes, that is the idea. So the just need to be careful at a slightly more detail. So, <coughs> for every node, you will store yes this for v2 you will store size of v2 this is the size of the subtree rooted at v2 you will have this counter for every node okay and then all you need to just figure out is that whenever you are splitting joining merging or doing whatever this list you can update these counters right okay and how can you update these counters I forget, always forget the picture. The only thing to note is that pick your any favorite implementation of balancer's tree, say red black tree, AVL tree, whatever, okay. All it does it, it performs a series of rotations, okay. And how does a rotation look like? A rotation, say a right rotation, it looks like you have this x, y, alpha, beta, gamma, and Suppose you right rotate at y, you will get something like this. It is x. Y. Okay. So, all you need to ensure is that whenever you are performing right rotation, whenever the implementation of the balancer tree is performing right rotation, you can preserve these counters. You can make these counters consistent. Okay. And you can quickly check that it can be done, right? I mean, it's easy to write the pseudo code here. Hmm? The make root is also implemented by a series of uh, sequence of joints and splits, right? So that will also boil down to a sequence of rotations. Okay. And how can this be done? Just a quick update. I mean, so here you have this counter, right? So this is size of x2. This is size of y. So when you are doing how many Some constant number. Right. And uh, how will you update this counter? The counter will be as you can see. I mean, the size of x will now become the size of y earlier, right? And the size of y, so. So, but we have just three numbers, so we just to add in. So, can you see that this will be the pseudocode, that size of x will become the size of y and size of y will become size of beta plus size of gamma. This is it, right? So size of v can be answered in constant time. What was the other operation that we needed? We needed this find label kind of thing, right? I mean, each node has a label associated with it. Now you are given a tree 
uh, a node v look at its tree and find if there is any label associated with that tree. Okay. How are you going to do that? Any idea? It is again like this, right. So, you will have a counter label f v, it will just say that look at the subtree rooted at v, does it contain any label or not, it is just a bit 0 or 1. Then you can update the bits during any rotation easily, right, just using this trick. And now I ask you that, hey, I give you this no guy v 1 or something, quickly find me a node which has some label associated with it, non-zero label associated with it. What will you do? You will just traverse down this thing, right? You have to go to the yes. Yeah. Okay. You are not going to go here, but you are going to go to the balance search tree here in this representation. Okay. Clear? So, find label v that can also be done in log in time. This is what we discussed last week. Okay. Any questions so far? Then we will move on to the next type of tree. So, here we just support one type of tree. You can actually support, uh, can you see that you can actually support find mean level. I mean, each label might have a key associated with it and find the label associated with the minimum key. That also you can do, exactly using this thing. Right. So, instead of this counter, you will have mean label of v. So, look at the subtree rooted at v, what is the minimum label in that? After you have changed the label of some vertex, you just need to follow the path to the root, right. It is log n. Okay. Then, let me delete this. So, ET tree is the simplest kind of data structure that is easy to present, visualize and it supports operations on the subtrees. I mean, if you are given any subtree, tell me information about that subtree, it can do this very efficiently because of this property of the Euler tool. But now, suppose I tell you something else, I mean, uh, I want to uh, support operations on paths. So, I will give you two nodes, they are in the same tree. And I want to tell you what is the distance between these two nodes. Can you do that using ET tree? You cannot, right? Because it does not support anything about the length of the paths, it does not preserve them. It is not even storing the tree, it is just storing the cyclical order. Okay. Yes. And suppose at every vertex I show the distance between that vertex and uh, the root. Then it will be a two approximation to the path. No, but when I so so what what I do is now I start when I oh. suppose refer distance between u and v, I start walking from u going up, and I, I also store the list of uh, edge vertices that I've encountered. So so I go from this guy up here, and when I come back. Hmm. Yes. And when you are joining two trees, the path information can change very radically, right? No, <coughs> okay. I think what he is he is making a valid point that the path information in the balance search tree does not correspond to the path information in the actual tree. Yes. The things which are open, yeah. they are the only ones. So, like E2 and E3, they will be open because they will be closed after you count them. Yeah. 
No, but can you update that count after join and split? Sorry? Yes. Okay. Or say for example, I give you a more complicated query, find me the diameter. What is the diameter? Find me the pair of nodes which are largest distance away from each other. I, I mean the distance, the value of that distance. I mean, so the idea is that whenever you want to make queries on subtrees, Euler two trees are very easy and they are very efficient. But whenever you want to query on paths, it is a different story. For that we need different trees. And this is what I am going to cover right now. I So, unlike in the Euler 2 tree where I could present the actual implementation and most of the details, this will not be the case for this guy. Uh, but I hope to convince to you the sub, uh, I hope to convey to you the main ideas. Okay. Yes. Okay, so this is called top tree. Hmm. On a bigger picture, uh, so I have a dynamic tree data structure. Mm -hmm. What was each tree? And is it a part of dynamic tree implementation or is it like separate? Though? No, it's just one way to implement a dynamic tree data structure. Okay, and this is all together. Yes, and top tree is a different way of implementing dynamic tree data structure, but top tree, okay. So, as I said, there is a complete zoo of dynamic tree data structures. So, you will probably find 10 or 12 different things. Okay. As far as I know, I mean there is nothing which you can do with some other data structure that you cannot do with a top tree. So, it is probably the strongest form of data structure that supports many different types of updates and things like that. Say for example, uh, the, the, the historical context in which this dynamic tree was developed was called slater Tarjan trees and they were considering this max flow algorithm and where you have to find an augmenting path and you have to increase the flow along that path, right. If you recall the max flow algorithm. Then what is the operation? You are given a path and you have to increase the value of each edge, right. And slater Tarjan tree did that in log n time regardless of the length of the path, log n amortized time. So, that was probably the first use of a dynamic tree data structure in the context of a static algorithm because you have to do this repeatedly, you have to increase the values of the paths. Top tree can also do that. So, that is why I said I will be happy to see some example if you find one just point it out to me that some dynamic tree operation that can be done by something else, but cannot be done with top tree. But the thing is the top tree, I mean the low level implementation might also be very complicated. So, I am not going to go into the low level implementation, but uh, so what I am going to present now is from these guys, oh I should have noted down the actual name. So, it is Rene to Wernick, it is the reference okay, about top trees. I hope I am spelling it correctly, it is his PhD thesis. And the thesis title itself I think is called top trees. It is uh, so what I am going to present is from the first or second chapter of that thesis. It is a beautiful thesis, it is almost like a book. So, if you are interested please read the book, no problem. And it also has some uh, descriptions of Euler two trees and so on. Okay, good. So, the first question here, as again in top tree, the main deal is you are given a tree that is not necessarily binary, that is not necessarily balanced, but you have to represent it somehow. So, for that we first need to understand the notion of a cluster. This is very crucial, if you do not get this, I mean 
you will not be able to follow anything after this. What is a cluster? A cluster is, okay, suppose you are of a tree, okay, cluster of a tree T. So, suppose you are given this tree. something. A cluster will be a subtree, a connected subtree. It is a set of edges, it is connected. So, you can say that, okay, let me just name them, okay. So, this is V 1, V 2, V 3, So, for example, if I tell you V 5, V 6, take this edge and then you take say V 9, V 11 and then you take say V 5, V 7. Is this a cluster? So, I am taking this edge. V 5, V 6, V 9, V 11 and V 5, V 7. Is this a cluster? Hmm? It is a connected subtree. So, cluster is first of all a connected subtree and it has two properties. Okay. Let me write it down, it will be more systematic. So, a cluster will satisfy two properties. This is a cluster. Okay. The first property is that it has to be a connected subtree. So, as you can see this is not a cluster, right, because this is not connected. Okay. So, this is not a cluster. Now, I give you another example. Actually, I, why did I do this? I could have just inserted this edge. Now, I, I make it connected. Okay. So, now you have this set of edges. So, V 5, V 6, V 5, V 9, V 7 and you have V 9, V 11. So, it looks like what can he say here? Okay, let me just. Now, the point is this is also not a cluster for the following reason. We will define the notion of a boundary vertex. Okay. So, in a cluster, you have a boundary vertex and you have internal vertex. So, intuitively just by looking at this term, can you tell me what are the boundary vertices in this cluster? Exactly, V 5, V 9, V 7, right. And V 6 and V 11, they are the, so these are the bound, this is the boundary of the cluster. And the internal vertices, they will be V 6 and V 11. So, you get the definition? This cluster will share some edge that does not belong to it only at a boundary vertex. Okay. The second condition for being a cluster is that this has to have 
at most two boundary vertices. So this is why it is not a cluster. Okay. On the other hand, if I had added this edge, then will this new thing be a cluster? This will be a cluster, right? V5, V7. Okay. Now, I say take these edges of the tree and suppose I give you a partition of the edge set into clusters. So, the clusters are mutually exclusive and exhaustive. Okay. Can you see visualize that in such a scenario you can represent each cluster as an edge. So, if you take I am just going to give you a partition. Okay. Say this is one cluster and let us say this part is the remaining cluster and let us say this part is the remaining cluster. Okay. And in this cluster you can see that there is only one boundary vertex. Suppose we just arbitrarily make this also a boundary vertex. Okay. We can right I mean the only condition is that on the internal vertices that no edge should go out through an internal vertex. Okay. So, for this cluster say V 5 and V 1 are the inter, uh, boundary vertices, for this cluster say V 7 and V 14 are the internal vertices. Okay. Now, after this partitioning we can draw these clusters like this V 1, then you have V 5 this is an edge and then V 5, V 7 is an edge and then from V 7 to V 14 there is an edge. And in this graph each edge represents a cluster, this is a meta edge. Okay. So, it is basically a graph on defined on the clusters based on the neighborhood relation. And the only reason why we can re def represent a cluster by an edge in this graph is because a cluster has two boundary vertices, otherwise you could not. Any question? Yes. So, previous question will be all set of edges. Exactly. Good point. I am just going to come to that. So, a trivial set of clusters, a, a trivial partitioning of the graph into clusters would be just considered the edges, the individual edges are the clusters. Okay. And now I am just going to define two operations, two join operations. Okay. So, let me just say this here. Yes. No, not necessary not necessarily be, be, I mean you can have a cluster here as well, right. It will be a tree, it will be some tree, that is a good point. The metagraph will be some tree, not a path. Okay. So, now these are the operations that you, uh, okay, that we will be considering on the clusters. Okay. What does this mean? A and B are two clusters that are non intersecting, uh, uh, that are uh, not disjoint, two disjoint clusters, but A and B intersect at a boundary vertex, and you are just taking the union of these two clusters. Okay. Now, this thing will be there will be two types of join operations okay, that will be allowed. I am just going to elaborate this thing. Type A is join compass
and type B is join rake. I will just illustrate them by a figure right now. Okay. So, what is compress, join compress? It will look like this. This is cluster A, this is cluster B and say this is U V W. So, A has boundary nodes U V, B has boundary nodes V W. The crucial point is that degree of V is 2. Okay. So, V what does this mean? This is the meta degree. This means V is not the boundary of any other cluster. Then when you say C will just be a new cluster that is U W. So, from this if you apply join compress you will get C which is U W. Now, can you see why this constraint is necessary that degree of V is 2? Why is this necessary? Anyone? Yes, suppose there is here something say x. Okay. Yes, or in other words, if you make this cluster C U W, it will have three boundary vertices. U is one, W is one, and V is one, and you are not allowed to do that. Yes. Okay. That's a good question. The thing is, the thing is. So, here his question was here we also treated V 1 as a boundary vertices right. Okay. So, if u is such a fake boundary the point is that of course, if u is such a fake boundary then you could do that, but for ease of implementation we are not going to allow to do that. Okay. I do not know what it will look like, but the somewhat convincing rationale is this why degree of V needs to be 2. Okay. So, join compress is we did this. Now, what is join rake? Join rake means A will be raked into V, B. So, this is B, this is V W and V might have many more degrees. Okay. Each of these edges is a cluster. Okay. And here is u, here is a. Okay. Rake means a is raked into b. This means the new cluster C, okay, if this is x1, x2, x3, after this operation, the partition into clusters will look like this. Vw, this is now C, this is x3. Okay. So, now this new cluster C contains everything that was in V and everything that was in A. And all the neighbors of U as well. All the neighbors of? So, you had U and V W. So, you suppose you had some external neighbors. You had some external neighbors. Oh, sorry, I need to specify this. Sorry. For Rick, thanks, thanks for pointing this out degree of u has to be equal to 1, because otherwise again this will have more than 2 boundary vertices. Clear? Any question? Divya, are you following this? No. V and W, yes, that is it. So, 
join means C is union of A comma B always. It always means C is union of A comma B and these two constraints that for join rec degree u is equal to 1, why do we need this constraint? Because otherwise C will have 3 boundary vertices. Yes. Okay. So now, uh, is it clear or uh, if any, anybody has a question? Tibia, is it clear? Okay. So now the idea is this we will start with this tree, and initially each edge is a cluster, right? It's a valid cluster. Then that will be the bottom layer, okay? then we will perform some compress and rake operations and go to the higher layer and keep on going this, doing this. Finally, we will build a super cluster that will contain all the edges in the tree, right. Just look at this hierarchical decomposition, how will it look like? It will look like a binary tree, right. The root is the super cluster, then it has two child clusters, then each of those child clusters also split into two style clusters. You went ahead doing this and at the bottom levels you just got all the edges. Yes, you can, okay, can't you see this because the point is that the, the only invariant, I am just going to go to that because at each level you have a tree, right. And if you have a tree, you can definitely perform rake because there will be at least one node with degree 1. So, you can at least go make one compress, uh, one join at each level. Why is it a binary tree? Sorry? <coughs> Why is it a binary tree? No, because join is defined only on two clusters, right? So, in this binary tree, C will be the parent node and it will have two children, A and B. Okay. Starting set is set of edges, those are the leaves. So, basically it is going to look like a hierarchical decomposition of the edges into clusters. Okay. And this is a new tree and this is the top tree. Okay. And now I am going to illustrate this with an example. That there are just two things to keep in mind, which we will not get into. One is that this top tree can be built so that it has height log n. That is just a greedy procedure stat static that at each level you just perform a maximal set of compress and rake operations and you will have height log n. The much more involved part is it can be maintained after each link cut operation in the underlying tree the top tree can also be adjusted in log n time. Okay. That we will treat as a black box that it can be done. No, suppose this is the underlying tree, right. Now, suppose I delete this, what will happen? You will have to build two new top trees, right, one on this, the other one on this and you have to ensure that each top tree has height log n. I am telling you that you can do that in log n time. It is just like you, it is probably a much more generalized version of balance search trees. Just like balance search tree split can be done in log n time, this can also be done in log n time. And we will just assume that this holds and assuming this we will see how to support much more involved path queries. Similarly adding edges. Sorry? Similarly adding edges. Yes, similarly adding edges. Okay. Any question? Now, if not, I am just going to illustrate this, how a top tree will look like and I am just going to pick the example that is given in this chapter. <coughs> it will be Okay, so 
this is G. So, I am just copying the example from the thesis. I mean, uh, I could just build make my own example, it is just a bit more work that is it. C. Okay, now let us just name them. This is A, B, C, D, G, E, F, I, J, H, K. Okay. So, this is the base level tree and this is how the top tree is going to look like. So, in the base level A C C G B C D G E G. So, where is E G? Actually, let me just simplify this thing. going to be too much of a trouble, sorry, it is actually going to be too much of a trouble, if I am going to do write this whole thing on the board. <laughs> sorry for this inconvenience, let me just write a simpler tree, <laughs> sorry, I mean it is going to be too long. Okay. Okay, let us just have this. Okay. So, you have A, B, C, D, E, F, G. This is the initial tree and now A C is an edge, B C is an edge, I am going to rig this thing and C D D E. C D D E F E G. Okay, good. So this is the top tree, okay, that we are going to construct. First, what do you do? Say we can uh, break this thing, right? A C into C B. Then, can we compress this? But we are not going to do this, we are just going to ensure that these are disjoint. I mean, how, what are we going to compress? Okay, fine. Fine, okay. we can compress this, we can compress this and we can say rake also this thing, right. Suppose we just perform these two operations. So, in the next level, what is it going to look like? So, we have compressed A C and B C, sorry. So, in the next level, you just have C B, this is the result of this rake and then you only have C E, this is the result of this compress and then you only have 
EF. This is the result of this rig. Okay. So, in the top three, you see that AC and BC got merged into BC. Then CD and DE got merged into CE. and then EF and EG got merged into EF. A cluster. Yes, and then I applied compress. Okay. So, the thing is that here is the underlying graph and here you have a partition of clusters you go to the above level, you have a meta tree and this is a partition of into clusters of that tree. Okay. And then what are you going to do again? You can say only do this, let us just call this rake or compress, you can do anything. right? But you cannot, you are not allowed to involve this cluster C in two multiple operations at the same level. So, you cannot just say that I am going to compress both of these things simultaneously, okay? because then it will have three children, it is not going to allow, be allowed. So, B C and C E got compressed and got raked say and now you have B E in this level B and E and you have E F. B C and C E and this is B E. Okay. And E F just means E F. Finally, apply a rake here say and you get E F. This is the last level. Oh, sorry. Okay, let us say that this is compress. Let's just make this compress. You can do anything here. Okay, good point. You are following this. So, is it clear? What does it look like? Yes, of course you can do. You can do because these are different clusters. I mean, a node, a boundary vertex may be involved in multiple operations. You don't care, but a cluster cannot be involved in more than one operation. Okay. Now, I'm not going to go into the proof, but can you intuitively see that why the height of this top tree will be more, not more than log n? Because the idea is that at each level you are performing a maximal set of operations you can do. I mean you are not leaving out anything. I mean if a cluster could have participated, it would have participated. So, you can basically show that at each iteration the number of clusters is getting roughly halved. It is not exactly true because say this cluster E f they did not participate. But there will not be many such clusters for which this happened. You may end up with two clusters on two sides, but if you say join compression, two clusters in the middle and two clusters on the side of the left side. Yes, okay. So let me make this a little bit more precise. Look at any layer here. Suppose there are k clusters, okay pick some constant c, some large constant c. I am going to say that at least k over c clusters will be merged. So, so my question was then, so how do you actually find out which to merge? Are you just doing this and Yes, I, I, yes, I am just saying this for the time being. Let us just look at the static setting. 
I am just saying do a greedy maximal approach. One thing, hmm? suppose I am trying to do join of two clusters hmm. and there is no vertex in common. What happens? Is there operation defined for that? No. Because then the new cluster will not be a connected subtree. It will violate this condition. Okay. And just uh, join the middle, like this one? These two. Yeah. These two. These two, skip the next one, again the next two, skip this one, again the next two. And okay. One. This is true, right? At least a constant fraction of the clusters got merged. So, uh, <coughs> at least in the static setting if I tell you to build the top tree, you can just do it greedily maximally at each iteration and you can show that at each iteration the number of clusters are getting reduced by a constant factor, it cannot go on for more than log n iteration, the log top tree will have height log n. What is much, much more involved is, now suppose I say that okay, I deleted this edge, this tree got split into two halves just build me two new top trees from the original top tree. Can you do that in log n time? Just as it is much more involved to see, I mean just building a balanced search tree is quite easy. I mean you can ensure that the tree has height log n, but how will you split it in log n time or how will you join two trees in log n time? That is much more involved and I am not going to go into that. I mean the, the uh, Renato Warneck devotes probably 50 pages proving that it can be done. If you are interested, feel free to go through the book chapter, but you can just take it on faith that this can be done, that these top trees can be maintained dynamically in log n worst case update time. Okay. Now the more interesting part, I will probably overshoot the time limit by 10 minutes. The updates and the queries, so what was the purpose of doing all this? and noting that this can be maintained in log n time. We want to support more sophisticated updates and queries. <sighs> okay. So, the updates, we are now just going to look at top tree as an abstract data structure. Okay. It just maintains this cluster somehow. Updates are something like updates that are allowed. What does this mean? U belongs to one tree, V belongs to a different tree. <coughs> Insert this edge UV. Now you have a bigger tree. So basically, this just tells you to join two top trees, one corresponding to U other one corresponding to V and return the union of these two things, clear? Next, so C here is a base cluster meaning it is an edge in the underlying forest. Cut C means you just destroy this base cluster, meaning you just delete this edge. So, there was one tree in the forest and now it is getting split into two trees. So, one top tree will split into two top trees. This update is allowed and finally, you are also allowed this update. What does this mean? Expose means V and U, it is assumed first check if V and U belong to the same tree or not. Okay. 
if no then return false just say that it does not belong to this two the same tree else ensure that in this the top tree for this tree the root cluster has v and w as its boundary vertices that is what expose means else make v comma u boundary nodes in the root cluster. So, suppose here I mean in this top tree the boundary nodes of the root clusters are E and F right. Expose V comma W I mean you can just ask here expose sorry you can say expose A and G is just going to rearrange this entire tree and ensure that at the root cluster A and G are the boundary vertices and it is going to do that in log n time. Each of these operations it is going to do that in log n time. You just assume that this can be done. Okay. And we can also call I am not going to write it down say expose v comma dot just it. It will just ensure that v is one boundary vertex of the root cluster of that top tree that is it. in expose v comma w yes fake boundary is allowed right i mean that's fine sorry dot dot it the other one can be anything yes there Okay, so yes. Yes. It will happen actually. So you are asking it just a combinatorial question that you are given a graph tree, and you are just given two arbitrary nodes in this tree. Can you build the top tree in such a way? that that will be the thing. Yeah, it can be done. I mean I I will just tell you one greedy way when you are just building this thing bottom up just make sure that one of these guys is not disappearing from the boundary when you are making this join and join compress and join break. Yes. 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 So the point is that initially, in the beginning, every node is a boundary vertex of its cluster, right? Then, in each iteration, you are doing some compress and rakes, and some nodes are disappearing from the boundary. Just ensure that V and W does not disappear from the boundary. That's it. Just avoid making those two moves. Yeah, I think it will be possible. The state, the state here, which is this guy, mm -hmm. right? And then try to do some rate or something. So keep this. writing the leaves till you reach yes. this. Yes. You are saying it's. We also have to maintain that at each time we do uh, some fraction of what we are up to maintain the original state. Yes, so the point is that. Okay. No, the, okay. One thing is that are you saying that okay, this is V here and it has many degree, right? Like this. You can 
wreck many of these, right? I mean, you just need to ensure that you are not making V disappear. If V was a leaf, fine. Say V was a leaf, right? Just club this thing together first. So, all you are saying is that, okay, the, here is this node X, right? And it has many pendant nodes. Say there are K such pendant nodes. For the time being, keep breaking these, I mean, pairs of these. So, in each iteration, the number of pendant nodes is getting halved. So, you can just argue that locally things are going well in this region, right? Because you are just keeping V isolated. Oh, right. Okay. Yes, that's a good, that's a nice, that's very nice. Yes. Right. So, what he is saying is that in this graph, say V is somewhere here, W is somewhere here. First, say partition this graph in such a way that you have something here, something here. And look at this path, you have some things here, right? Okay. Now, first just look at this part, make a top tree here, ensuring that V is the root. That you can do, right, intuitively, because V is just in one end. Okay. So, you collapsed this thing, whole thing into V, collapse this whole thing into W. Okay. And then again, V and W are in the complete other extreme. And then, ju then just keep on fixing this region. So, you can all do all this parallel. Yes, you need to do all this parallel. Okay, just the point is it can be done in log n height. I mean, it is not a concrete proof, it is not a full proof. But so, so, I will start with finding a minimum cross from V to W, right? So, I, so that I can exclude that edge which is fixed me from V to W. And hmm. then merge the subtree which, which is rooted at me. Yes, I just gave you one idea, but maybe when they are maintaining this dynamically, they are doing some more sophisticated thing. This is just to get a feel for it that this can be done. Okay. Could you make the what? Oh, link and cut are basically you have in the underlying forest, u belongs to one tree, v belongs to a different tree. No, u and v are nodes. Yes. Yes. Cut C is a base cluster. Sorry? Yes. The cluster is the root cluster of the new underlying tree. Okay. And cut C, I said C is a base cluster. Base cluster means an edge. So, you are just deleting an edge from the underlying forest. Okay. So, I am going to erase this. I am going to erase this. Now, as an abstract data structure, what it will do? It is going to support this updates just by performing a sequence of primitive operations. Create E. So, E is an edge, create a cluster out of this edge. This means C had these two children in the top tree. Destroy this node C, cluster C, and return me these two children. And finally, destroy a base cluster. Okay. 
So, you can just think of it as follows these updates are supported and whenever you ask for an update it is just going to perform order of log n many primitive operations and it is going to fix you the tree. Okay. This is how it is works. Now, we want to support some more sophisticated updates right? Uh, or queries. The sophisticated queries are okay. here is these two nodes u and v, what is the length of the path and so on. The way to think about it is that you can only access the root cluster when you are asking that okay, what is the length of the path between u and v. You can only probe the root cluster of the top tree. Okay. That is why this expose is important. So, you ask you are asking for the path length between u and v, you first expose u and v and then you look at the root cluster. Okay. Now, I am going to show you how those operations can be supported. So, the nice thing is you might be wondering that okay, if dynamic tree were only meant to support connectivity information, then we are done right. But now we are saying that we might need for di many different applications, many sophisticated operations. So, now do we really need to look at the implementation details, how it is done to figure out whether those sophisticated operations can be supported or not. right? There, there is a systematic way of going about it. For example, suppose you want to find this thing as before in ET tree, the size of a tree rooted at V. Okay. I tell you that this can be done using top trees. And you do not even know what how it is doing this rearrangement. Okay. You just need to look at this abstract data structure and see that it can be done. Why? Basically, just take any implementation of top trees that supports this operation and then just augment it. I mean, whenever it is so for each cluster C, you will just keep a field. So, you will just keep a field size c, where c is a cluster. This will just mean the number of nodes in that cluster. And then whenever it is doing this operations c join compress a comma b, you just say that okay, size c now becomes size a plus size b. minus 1. Thank you. Whenever it is splitting, you just need to destroy this field size c. That is it. Okay, clear? So, you can see that this can be maintained. Next thing is as I said, the path information. So, you want to support queries of this form. Say path length u comma v given two nodes u and v in the same tree, what is the distance between the path? Can you tell me how to do that? Exactly. So, you just store length for each cluster. So, C is a cluster for each cluster you store the length and then just look at any implementation whenever it is doing a compress. So, join compress how will it look like? So, this is A, this is B. So, U, V, W and this is C, C 
is now u comma w. This is joint compress. When you are doing joint compress, what you need to set? So you will just set length of C. I am setting L for length. Is just equal to length of A plus length of B. This is for compress. For rake, what it will look like? Anybody? Yes. So, rake basically means A is raked into B. So, you can see that we will just say L C is equal to L B, right? Because the boundary of C will be the boundary of B. So, rake looks like this. This is B here, B. U, this is A. So, U was degree 1, you raked it, and the new cluster C is this after the rake. Shouldn't we do some mean there? Sorry? Shouldn't we do some Min? No path length u comma v, oh sorry, length of c is the length between the boundary vertices. So, the length between distance between v comma w in b is going to be the same as the distance between v comma w in c, <coughs> c right. Any question, Anjukta? Okay. So, depends on which of the boundary vertices, right? The distance never changes. If it is B and W, for instance, the distance is changed. When you are raking A into B, you are forgetting about C here. Q is no longer a boundary. It is only B and W. Right? Okay. Now, as I said, maintaining diameters. Oh, split you just need, I mean for A and B, A and B were the children of C, right? So, that field was stored already, you just destroy that field for C, that is it. Yes. Yes, I mean you are just. simple, the primitives are very simple. So, uh, this is the beauty of this structure, I mean you do not need to know how the uh, top tree thing is going to invoke these primitives, in which order you do not know, it might be something very complicated. Okay. So, for example, path length u comma v, how are we going to return the path length? You first expose u comma v. log n time, yes, using this. Okay. Okay, I, I have not read the full details of how expose can be done in log n times, but the point is that once you accept this, that this can be done, it is easy to check which operations can be supported and which operations cannot be supported. I will just give you one ex more explain, uh, example, then we will just stop. So, we will just conclude dynamic trees. Suppose diameter So, this just says look at the tree containing V, return me its diameter. And you know what the diameter is? Diameter is, I mean, look at the pair of nodes that are farthest away from each other. What is the distance between them? Now, as usual, 
we are going to store a field some fields with each cluster and when we are asked this query what are we going to do we are first going to call expose v comma dot so that v is now part of the root cluster containing the okay exactly wow you are really fast okay good it took me some time to figure this out but uh, can you see what what he, what he says yes so uh, basically for each cluster you store two fields so one is diameter of c this is the diameter of C. The other one is actually you store three fields. What is this? U and V are the boundary vertices. So U comma V are the boundary. <laughs> of C max u of c means I am just going to define max v of c here. It just says look look at all the nodes in c what is the maximum distance from this boundary node. Okay. So, just ask which is the node farthest from this boundary in C and what is the distance of that node from this boundary. You just store these three fields. And furthermore, you also store length C this is what we just discussed right now the length between the boundary the distance between the boundary of u and v and we know this can be updated quickly right. So, let us just look at a compress operation all we claim is that when you are doing a compress operation we can update all these fields. So, this is compress A, B, <coughs> we know length C can be updated, length C will be length A plus length B. What will be the diameter of C? Anyone? From the fields from B, A and B, how will you guess the diameter of C? diameter of C is look at all pairs of nodes in C the maximum distance. Where is diameter V? Oh, that just says that look at the tree containing V, find me its diameter. Yes. Yes, and that is why I said, right, we first will call expose V, comma dot, so that we have the root cluster and then we will just probe the diameter of the root cluster. No, expose V will return you the root cluster of that tree that contains V. So, expose V works on a collection of properties. Yes, yes. 
it just works on a collection of top trees. It will return us the root cluster. So, you see that to maintain the diameter, all we need to show is that we can update these values during every join compress operation, every join rake operation. During split, it is easy, right? I mean, you just destroy the values for C. Just as an exercise, can you just think of how will you update it? I mean, you have these values for A and B. How will you get the values for C? Okay, it is a max of several things, diameter of C. It is a max of several things. One is that this pair of nodes x comma y, it can both belong to A, right. Diameter of C is this quantity, right. Case 1 is both x and y belong to A, in which case diameter of C is going to be diameter of A. right. Case 2 is both x and y belong to B, in which case diameter of C is going to be diameter of B. Case 3 is x belongs to A, y belongs to B or the other way around. In that case, what will be the diameter of C? Exactly. Then it will be max V A these are the only three possible cases right. I am not going to do the rake you can try to figure it out how to do the rake, but compress is not finished yet right. We have to update max V of C right. Oh, sorry, max u and max w, right. So, let us just do max u of w, uh, max u of c. Yes, yes, can you see that in c, what is the node that is largest distance away from u? Okay. Let that node be x that is largest distance away from u. Two cases, case 1 is x is within a, then max u of c <coughs> is going to be max u of a. It did not change right, the distance did not change. Otherwise, this x is in b, then what will you need to do? How will you find that x? You will first have to go to v from u. For that the distance travelled will be length of a plus from v you need to go as far as possible within b. That will be max v of c, that is it. And similarly, you can update max w of c. So, basically the power of top trees is that it gives you a very systematic way of arguing about what queries can be supported and what queries cannot be supported. I mean it is not something ad hoc thing that okay, I just give you some query under the sun and you have to figure out all going all through the implementation details if it can be supported or not. Just see if you can support this query along these 